regular NBC programs will not be seen so that we can bring you the following NBC Sports presentation. NBC Sports presents... The 1987 National League Championship Series. Today, from Bush Memorial Stadium, the San Francisco Giants versus the St. Louis Cardinals. Brought to you by Miller Brewing Company, sole sponsor of the U.S. Olympic Training Center. By your Toyota dealer in the all-new Dimension 88 Corolla, who could ask for anything more. By Allstate, for home, auto, and life insurance, you're in good hands with Allstate. And by the U.S. Army, a place to be all you can be. Hi, everybody. I'm Vin Scully, along with Joe Garagiola. Welcome to St. Louis, the gateway to the West, and to Bush Stadium, where the Cardinals hope it will become the gateway to the World Series. St. Louis took a giant step, and no pun intended, by winning last night in a game they figured perhaps to lose, with their ace Danny Cox shelved with the bad neck and the absent Jack Clark. The Giants, relying on Rick Russell, figured they would win, and it didn't come out that way. So the Cardinals have the jump one game to none, a big psychological win for St. Louis, and what could be a psychological downer for the San Francisco Giants, as Dave Dravecki tries to right the ship against John Tudor. What about the psychological damage? of losing a game you really figured you were going to win. Well, Joe Garagiola is down on the field with Roger Craig. Let's go and find out. Okay, Vin. Roger, yesterday's ball game, you had to feel going into it you had the edge, especially with Danny Cox not being the starting pitcher. Uh, you, uh, psychologically, what did it do to lose that ball game? Well, you know, I felt we did have the edge, but you know, but you got to give uh, Matthews credit. He uh, he pitched a good ball game. He had his off stride. He had a good uh, uh, off speed pitch, and he had a good enough fastball to keep us honest. And uh, my guy Russell pitched well. It just seemed like we were, we were not supposed to win that ball game. They made, had three blue pits uh, in that inning. One ball hit to Uribe, thrown to Robbie. Might did have you been have a, big... a meeting today? No, I don't need a meeting today. Why? If you don't, if you have to motivate him in playoffs uh, in the World Series or whatever, then it's too late. But uh, we even yesterday after ball game, we are relaxed. Uh, we uh, we don't feel any pressure. We feel that you know today's a very crucial ball game for both clubs, especially us because we lost uh, yesterday. But we've been a club all year that have came back. We never do anything easy, and uh, we feel very confident about today. So you did give the impression in the clubhouse, hey, we lost, and let's get them tomorrow. Oh sure, after the ball game's over, I said, hey, don't worry about it. We got them right where we want them. You know, we've done this all year. We don't do anything easy. We'll come out smoking today. Good luck to you, Roger. Okay, Joe. Thank you. <laughs> okay, man. There it is. Thank you, fellas. The big note, of course, John Tudor had not faced the Giants this year. In the previous two years, he made four starts against them, three wins, no losses, and one no decision. In the previous three years, Dave Dravecki has made six starts against St. Louis. He has a record of one and one and four no decisions. Left-hander against left-hander. We'll get to the starting lineups right after this. Introducing Toyota Corolla for 1988. Dramatic new looks that'll literally stun you. Performance that'll surprise you. And value that is legendary. For 1988, it's a whole new dimension for Corolla. Toyota quality. Who could ask for anything more? Toyota! Most men know I model swimsuits for a famous sports magazine. No one knows what beer I drink. Well, it's never lie. For obvious reasons, I like light because it's less filling. But most of all, I like it because it tastes great. As for men, <laughs> sometimes I just don't understand it. I think these guys have never seen a girl with the middle life before. <laughs> oh, for a perfect 10, there's only one light beer. Miller Lite. Alpha aggressor tank spotted. No, no, no. In a battle drill, you need horsepower. Firepower. 
people power. That's teamwork. Moving take, track front, shoot down. This team uses a computer, thermal sight, laser rangefinder. Ah! Yeah! All that you can We win, the whole tank wins. The whole team wins. Not just one person. Find your future in the army. near you. The preceding message was furnished by Major League Baseball. In the aftermath of last night's victory, it is a high-spirited city of St. Louis, and reflecting the spirits of the city and the ball club as usual, the Wizard of Oz, Ozzie Smith, as he took the field just moments ago. Watch this. He's something else. So the Cardinals leading one game to none. And this is the second game. The show will then move on to Candlestick Park starting Friday night. Here's the way the visiting Giants will stack up for game two against the left-hander John Tudor. Robbie Thompson at second base and Kevin Mitchell at third. Jeffrey Leonard in left field and Candy Maldonado in right. Chili Davis in center with Will Clark at first. Bob Melvin behind the plate. Jose Uribe the shortstop and the pitcher Dave Dravecki. Defensively, a couple of changes. Uh, Coleman is still in left field, McGee in center field, but Okendo is in right field, and they give up nothing as far as defense with him out there. Pendleton, Smith, Her, Lindemann is the big first baseman getting over a bad cold. Pena behind a plate and Tudor. And then he'll be a copy pretty much of uh, Matthews, who pitched last night. Changes speeds, keeps the ball in the ballpark. And what numbers? Not only his won and lost record, he has beaten the Giants four straight. He is eight and one after the collision with Barry Lyons where he suffered the broken leg. In his 16 starts this year, the Cardinals have won 14 of them. And remarkably, he is better than four to one on AstroTurf. As a Cardinal, 37 and nine on the rug, under 500 on grass. And for good measure, he is four and one lifetime against the Giants, although he did not pitch against them this year. Robbie Thompson will start it off. Then Kevin Mitchell and Jeffrey Leonard. Candy Maldonado hitting fourth. A beautiful day, a bright breeze, and a sky just as shiny overhead. So Thompson to start it. Fly ball to straightaway center, Willie McGee. One pitch, one away. The Giants, during the regular year, split the six here they were seven games above 500 on the road and they were 11 games above 500 at home Kevin Mitchell really does well against John Tudor in his young career he is six for nine against Tudor including his first major league home run back in April of 86 he has hit two home runs in those six hits against Tudor one ball and no strikes. Kevin in last night's ball game had one hit singled in the first inning and was robbed of a hit on an excellent play by Ozzie Smith. Two balls, no strikes. In there. Sunlight. The analogy I heard, Ben, and not anybody ever played golf will understand it. With Matthews pitching last night, you're able to read the putt, you know, go to school. So mm -hmm. they were able to go to school on Matthews preparing for tutor. Two balls and two strikes. One away. We're just starting out. The Giants and the Cardinals. Game two. Jeffrey Leonard waking his turn on deck. Two balls, two strikes. And that's it. Foul down the right field line. Slicing out of play. During batting practice, the Giants were really cognizant of the 
pitching low and changing speeds of Tudor like Matthews may be moving up on the plate and taking away that pitch that they turn over. They chased a lot of balls. They were out in the strike zone last night. Two balls, two strikes. He wouldn't chase that one, but he almost did. Full count. Giants during the regular year, six games above 500 against left hand pitching. Now Kevin Mitchell goes down on strikes. That's number one, and the batter will be Jeffrey Leonard. He changes speeds, and Mitchell is way out in front, and something Tudor does well. What impressed Whitey Herzog was his ability to throw strikes in a ballpark like Fenway and pitch inside. He'll get his fastball in enough times to keep you honest, but he changes speeds and keeps that ball down most of the time. That was a borderline strike and it was clocked at 77. And here now is Jeffrey Leonard bothered by a bad wrist and a hamstring pull but last night hit a monstrous home run into the seats in center and also singled a right in the eighth inning. So Leonard went two for four. There was a pretty good message right there Vin. He had just struck Mitchell out on that 77 mile an hour blazer. <laughs> but he comes back with Leonard and comes inside with a fastball. He's got good defense on that side with Ozzie Smith and Pendleton. You can't shoot a ball through there, and we know what McGee can do, and Coleman has improved. So his strength is on the shortstop and third base side. On one, the count to Jeffrey Leonard here in the first inning, no score. One ball and one strike. So Lindemann, Her, Smith, and Pendleton on the infield. Coleman, McGee, and Okindo in the outfield. Pena behind the plate handling John Tudor. Two and one. Did you like Leonard's quote in the paper when they asked him about did you hit a fastball? <laughs> he very diplomatically said, if you want to call it that, because he ain't got one. Yeah, he was about as diplomatic <laughs> as if he was severing relations with a country. <laughs> <laughs> Two and one. Little nubber roll to the right side. Tommy Hur is there, and even Leonard looked like he might have been chasing a bad ball as he rolls out. So the Giants tiptoe out of the first at the end of half an inning. Giants nothing. Cardinals coming up. Tastes great. Let's feel it. Tastes great. Let's... At Miller Lite, we'd just like to say we're sorry if we might be responsible for prolonging the football strike. Here's hoping they settle it soon. Tastes great. Let's feel it. Tastes great. Let's feel it. My brother thinks he's bought the perfect TV. Sure did. It's perfect, perfect TV. Oh, yeah? Perfect, yeah. Does it have a flat square picture, too? Yep. High-resolution yep. filter? Yep. 178-channel capability? Roger. Four-speaker stereo system? Yep, right On-screen graphics? Yep. A remote that controls the TV, wireless cable, and VCR, mm -hmm. even if they're different brands. Hey, I got a Magnavox. Smart, Tom. Very smart. Yeah, I know. Acting dumb is just my job. <laughs> Doing a great job. Even though you faithfully pay your premiums, why do some insurance companies make you feel so guilty? I had an accident. Do you have an estimate? Two estimates? Three estimates. And a note from your mother. My mother? Leave it to the good hands, people. In most cases, Allstate will give you a settlement on the spot without three estimates or a note from your mother. How do we know it's her writing? Mm -hmm. You're in good hands with Allstate. A member of the Sears Financial Network. I like Wheaties because they're just like running backs, crispy when you crunch them. I like Wheaties because they're just like linemen. They got no sweetness. Raquel Welch, as you never thought you'd see her, her family's love gave her the strength and courage to ask for the right to die. Monday. Here are the Cardinals with Vince Coleman in left field, Ozzie Smith the shortstop, and Tommy Herr at second base, Terry Pendleton in the cleanup spot at third, Willie McGee in center, Jim Lindemann at first, Jose Akindo in right field, Tony Pena behind the plate, John Tudor on the mound. Defensively, it's the same as it was in the first ball game, except for Melvin behind the plate. Dave Dravecki 
an overall record of 10 and 12 as a giant he is 7 and 5 he didn't have any record against the Cardinals this year 5 and 3 lifetime interesting about Drebecki in 1984 when he was with San Diego he relieved and got the save in the clinching game and that was against San Francisco his first major league victory was against San Francisco July the 4th 1982 and five years later on July the 4th he was traded to San Francisco one and one to Vince Coleman he's got a good sinker and a slider he'll pitch inside one way to check to see if dravecki has got his good stuff is the number of bats he'll break usually he'll break a couple bats in the course of a nine inning game if he's got his good stuff Coleman had one hit in three trips last night that's off the corner ball two. Vince was also thrown out trying to steal second base in the third inning. Fouled away. Well, I found it uncanny too. Two strikes and no balls, and uh, Craig called a pitch out. And many people felt that you know two strikes you're going to waste it anyhow, but uh, Coleman thought he could steal, and Craig called a pitch out and got him. Coleman has better numbers for an average as a left-handed batter, but a little more power right-handed. All three of his home runs hit right-handed. Fly ball hit down the line, a trio of giants, and it will be Maldonado. So Coleman a fly ball to right, one down, and Ozzie Smith coming up. When you look at the Cardinal lineup, they really jolt you. Because you have Vince Coleman leading off, a switch hitter, followed by Ozzie Smith, a switch hitter, followed by Tommy Herr, a switch hitter, followed by Terry Pendleton, a switch hitter, and then Willie McGee, a switch hitter. So five consecutive switch hitters, that can drive you crazy if you're the opposing manager trying to wheel and deal with them. You have to take a roll call, see if it's not the same guy going up there all the time. Ozzie's numbers have fallen way off this year as a right-handed batter ground foul one and one hitting 335 hitting left-handed and almost a hundred points less than that right-handed one out bottom of the first inning no score ball two two and one for the Cardinals six straight years the number one team in stolen bases and last in home runs five of the last six years like the only major league team not to hit a hundred home runs a drive to left uh, Jeffrey Leonard is right there so two down and the batter will be Tommy Herr at Candlestick Park Friday night the Cardinals say it will either be Joe McGrain or Danny Cox Adley Hamaker will be pitching for San Francisco and then again on Saturday, either McGrain or Cox against Mike Kruko. Tommy Herr, pretty consistent ball player. On the 18th of September, he appeared in his 1,000th game. On the 19th of September, he collected his 1,000th hit. Takes a strike. When you look at Herr's numbers, Whitey knows he is a much better hitter, maybe 55, 60 points higher as a right-handed batter. 0 and 1. For Whitey Herzog, as this game begins today, as the Cardinal manager, Whitey is undefeated at home. His record six wins and no losses in the league championship series in St. Louis. Ball two. Two and one. Cardinals were nine games over 500 against left-handers. And of course, Jack Clark, while he was healthy, had a great deal to do with that. That's it down the right field line, slicing foul and out of play. On the count, two balls, two strikes. Tommy Herr with Terry Pendleton on deck. Plugging it is Robbie Thompson to throw back to Will Clark, and the Cardinals are gone in order. And at the end of an inning, the Giants nothing and the Cardinals nothing.
you were stranded on an island, what kind of car would you want? On this island, you'd want the legendary reliability of Toyota Camry. You'd want responsive 16-valve power and front-wheel drive to ease your way through savage traffic in very civilized room and comfort. And, of course, you'd want Camry style just to impress the natives. Toyota quality. Who could ask for anything more? Toyota! Cats, the number one family musical in America. Cats, the world's most thrilling theatrical event. Cats, the magic, the mystery, the memory will live forever. Cats, the seven-time Tony Award winner, the once-in-a-lifetime experience, the most exciting family musical. In a word, Cats. Call 1-800-233-3123. Get your tickets for Cats now. I am master of ancient art of karate, kung fu, and the Chinese a chuckle. Yeah. But the one about the socializing... Yeah. I always reach for a call the Miller Light. <laughs> light is a great, lightless feeling, too. Yeah. Hey, anybody want the pepperoni? Ancient proverb, only one light beer, Miller Light. Mobile One Synthetic Motor Oil. No matter what you drive, or how you drive, or where you drive, or what conditions you drive under, with Mobile Synthetic Oil technology, there's no finer engine protection anywhere. Mobile One, on the leading edge of mobile motor oils, Last night, Candy Maldonado in the eighth inning hit a ball up the alley in left center field that was ruled a ground rule double. And from where we sat and the way I called it, I thought that fan in the white shirt had leaned over the basket and touched the ball before it hit the basket. And I wondered, had he not touched it, if it had hit the basket, it might have stayed in play and it might have meant an additional run. As it turned out, I was wrong, and whoa, what a hornet's nest, or should we say a, a covey of cardinals were flushed on that call. And if uh, to err is human, you're listening to a very human person. But I do figure that forgiveness has to be here in a city named after a saint, right? Yeah, and if I get half your aggravation, I want half that forgiveness, too. So you called me baby. at 7 this morning. We hey, were friend, wrong. Sorry, baby, sorry. <laughs> All right. Foul back. Go on one. Candy Maldonado. Fouling it away, 0-1. Candy last night, grounded to third, fly to center, popped up and doubled. One for four. One ball and one strike to count. They were throwing that slow stuff on the outside part of the plate uh, last night, and during batting practice, it was hit through the middle in the right field because you can get around on this fastball. Two balls and one strike to count. There's one thing about John Tudor that jumps at you when you study his performances this year, and that is 16 starts, no complete games, and a total of 96 innings. Lined into left field and working towards the corner, Coleman over to cut it off, and Maldonado will hold on. What it turns out to be is John Tudor gives you a very strong six innings, so we'll be counting his pitches as the afternoon goes along. There is the very thing that the batting coach Morales was talking about. Protect that outside corner and hit that ball if you choose because he can't get that fastball by you. That's what he was trying to convince Maldonado of. And there you see Jose charting all those hits, and he's writing that down because he did come inside, and Candy was able to open up and hit it hard to left field. Chili Davis, who is the number one giant against left-hand pitching. He has 14 home runs and 34 RBIs against lefties. The Chili backed up by Will Clark. Ball one. Maldonado standing at first has less than average running speed. He is not a runner at all. He's a multi-talented kid except for speed. He's a break-even base dealer. Eight out of 16. Chili Davis, we told you, is the number one hitter against left-handers, and he has been wearing Tudor out. He's hitting 570 against Tudor, admittedly only seven at-bats. 2-0. Oh. 
No score, top of the second. Oh, what a beautiful pitch. You talk about hitting off a of motion. Wow. That's the classic. When you're behind that hitter, two balls and no strikes, throw something besides the fastball, and he really changed speeds and was so effective that uh, Chile goes back, uh, gets a little more stick him, uh, but he's regrouping and asked to check that baseball. He took a swing at Tudor's elbow that time. You can see under it and way out in front. Tremendous pitch. 77 miles an hour. In the last five pitches that he has made, he's been in the 70s and four of the five. The one pitch he gave up to Maldonado for a base hit, that was clocked at 85. That's his fastball. And got it inside. Two and one, the count of Chile. He's one of those guys, if you were scouting and used a radar gun, I doubt if you would sign him, but if you were looking for a pitcher, I think you'd find Tudor's uh, picture in that section. Mm -hmm. Under pitchers. He is a pitcher, not a thrower. Last six years, he's won at least 10 games every year. In fact, in 1985, he had a remarkable year. He started one win and seven losses. The win was against the Giants, and then went 20 victories and one loss. Mm. Can you imagine? 20 and one. They think there might be a hit and run play on here. It's a little tough to do. You don't have running speed at first, and you have Chili Davis who has struck out over a hundred times, although he strikes out less as a right-handed hitter. Tudor almost got him leaning. He just did get back. What the Giants do with the left-hand pitcher is ask their base runner to take a one-way lead in the first move, go back to first base, and then on the next pitch, break. And if you break too soon, you're going to get, get caught off. And it looks like that's what Maldonado is doing, getting a big lead, a one-way lead. Two and one. Good fastball, and I guess Chile couldn't believe it on the outside corner. Two and two. Tony Pena. Trying to outthink Chili Davis behind the plate. Tudor does not allow much of a running game against him. There have only been six attempted steals. The opponents have been successful four times. Got him. The second strikeout. Remember last night, Greg Matthews with a lot of off speed pitches struck out seven. And for good measure, Ken Daly came in and struck out Brenly. Will Clark who came up in the number one spot last night that was in the eighth inning with the bases loaded the Giants trailing by two had his hacks against Ken Daly and hit a fly ball to right field. Clark won for four last night was a very solid part of the giant attack in September and October he hit about 360 including eight home runs his pattern last night was to hit the middle to left field line and he said it'll continue but situations will dictate whether he'll stay with it and here's a situation where he does have a gap between first and second with Maldonado on at first base one ball and no strikes if you remember if you were with us last night Clark lost a base hit on a fine play by Tommy Herr, who plugged up that hole then he single grounded out and hit the fly ball to right. One and zero to Will with Bob Melvin on deck. High towering drive to right field. Back goes Akindo on the track at the wall. Gone. And Clark oh, almost, almost passed, passed him. Maldonado. Yes, Maldonado stopped to watch it, and Clark very alertly stopped. You talk about some good quick base running Maldonado he thought maybe the ball was going to be caught he was going to watch it and Clark really had to put the brakes on Maldonado was almost wrong two ways first of all Maldonado started back to the bag when Clark hit it and he appeared a little confused and as you said Clark came so close to passing it. There he goes around he sees the home run and he's still looking then he'll pick up Maldonado right there. Whoa. Because Tudor had Maldonado breaking back, as you said, Ben. And that crowd just reacted to the ball being thrown back. And the first pitch now to Bob Melvin is outside. Ball one, one and oh. Melvin has been a very successful catcher for Dave Dravecki. That's one of the big reasons why he's in there. When Melvin has caught Dravecki, Dravecki was five and one. 
Melvin caught two of Grebecki's three giant shutouts. And also, Brenly has had a lot of trouble with Tudor. Right. Brenly won for 15 against Tudor. So you combine Brenly, inability to get hits against Tudor, Melvin's success, and you have Melvin catching Grebecki. One ball and two strikes. Two and two. On deck, Jose Uribe. Giants put their brand on the game last night when Leonard hit a home run. They were second in the league to the Cubs in home runs. They hit 205 during the regular year. There's a drive to right center, but coming over as a kendo to take care of. Take another look at what could have been quite a snafu. Maldonado is going to start coming back. Betty Day, number 23. He's going to watch Rosa, it. Jose Uribe. Here he goes. And I mean, he's really coming yeah. back. Yeah. And right there, he had to put those brakes on very alertly. Boy, did he stop. Whoa. He must have lost that ball, man. Apparently. Maldonado. Had to. Because the way he turned to coming back, I think he thought it was caught. So it is two to nothing Giants, and here's Uribe. And he's out in front. So Candy Maldonado, confused but made it around. Uribe is regrouping. What's that line about we're lost but we're making good time? <laughs> that, that was Candy for a minute. It almost looked like Lloyd Mosby stealing second, stealing first, yeah, and right. going back. 0 oh 1 to Jose. On the corner. That's a pinpoint pitch. 0 oh 2. They want to take that outside corner away from Tudor, and he's going to keep throwing it there until they do. And once they start to lean over, he'll push him back with the fastball. John allowed 11 home runs during the regular year. Pop fly, back of first, Lindemann angling over into foul territory. Puts it away. Two runs, two hits. A home run by Will Clark, and almost wrong way Corrigan. And at the end of an inning and a half, it's the Giants two and the Cardinals nothing. Seven of the top ten finishers in the 87 Indy 500 prepared their engines with a special high-performance oil treatment. Its name, STP. STP is the racer's edge. Chicken Little's come and go with me. Chicken Little's on the FKFC. Chicken Little's come and go with me. Wow, 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 wow. Kentucky Fried Chicken's new Chicken Little Sandwiches. They cost just a little, but people love them a lot. Come and go with me. Fans, please. Mr. Garfield, welcome to Embassy Suites Hotel. My room. Oh, all our rooms are really two-room suites for the price of a single room. Beautiful. Don't change a thing. The living room, sir. Love what you've done with this room. The bedroom. This is great. I need my space. And of course, you'll want to take advantage of Embassy Suites' free breakfast. Food. Served every morning. At Embassy Suites, you don't have to be a fat cat to enjoy the sweet life. I resemble that remark. Introducing Toyota Corolla for 1988. Dramatic new looks that'll literally stun you. Performance that'll surprise you. And value that is legendary. For 1988, it's a whole new dimension for Corolla. Toyota quality. Who could ask for anything more? Toyota. Flying high above St. Louis in this beautiful day, the Goodyear Blimp America from Houston, Texas. The pilot, Captain Don McDuff from Anson, Texas. This is the 50th year a Goodyear blimp has appeared at a postseason baseball game. Down on the field, before we get to the bottom of the second inning, Dave Drabecki was making his way out to the mound. He was intercepted by Ed Montague. As you see, Terry Pendleton getting a wrist wrapped, his left wrist. 
Dave Dravecki met with Montague. Dravecki then turned after talking to the plate umpire, gave Montague the ball, walked back into the giant dugout, unbuttoned his shirt, and then disappeared from our view. He was wearing, and I see one change immediately, he was wearing a white undershirt underneath his baseball uniform, and then he had a gold medal around on a gold chain around his neck. He's now wearing a black undershirt underneath his shirt, and perhaps that's part of it. You can see the black undershirt. It was white when it, he pitched the first inning. It was the undershirt, and it was the sleeve uh, that was uh, supposedly the culprit as far as uh, how he was dressed, so they made him take it off. So everything is now satisfied with the black undershirt and Terry Pendleton, Willie McGee and Jim Lindeman in that order. Bottom of the second inning. The Giants two Cardinals nothing. Will Clark hit one out with Maldonado aboard. Terry Pendleton much better numbers as a right handed batter. He's hitting close to 340 this year from this side of the plate. Pendleton, however, hit eight of his 12 home runs left-handed. Two balls, no strikes. Boy, what a great year he's had, and what a brilliant defensive year, even though he's had a lot of errors. He's actually just made plays most third basemen couldn't get to. Right. Well, we talked about it last night, the tip-off being how far over towards uh, second base Ozzie Smith can play because he knows this guy can cover that hole. Can he ever? Big chopper over the head of Mitchell. It goes back to get it. Does a 360 and throws him out. Boy, you talk about playing third base. There's a dandy. That's a major league play because it looked like it was going to get over his head, and he knew he was going to make a long throw. Watch him now. It's an artificial surface bounce. Now all he can the ice cream called it, and now he's got to put something on it. And I tell you, he gets him by a pretty good margin. Major league play. An AstroTurf bounce just to complicate matters. And the throw got him by plenty. Willie McGee takes ball 1-1-0. One, one and oh. McGee in last night's game had two singles. Went two for four. Made a very good defensive play. His description of that defensive play he went in the gap and he said he was going to dive for it. When it hit the surface, he decided to backhand it. And he said, I didn't see it the last four feet. Put the glove where I thought it would be and it was there. Checked his swing. He might be the most consistent of the switch hitters. At first base, Dave Pallone calling strikes, so the count one and two. McGee hitting 284 left handed, 288 right handed. 11 home runs, five left handed, six right handed. On the corner, and down he goes. So Dravecki looked a little bit like Tudor on that pitch, two down. Dravecki will not give you the middle, uh, the middle of that play, and he'll in and out it, but here he takes a shot at that corner, and I mean it is right there. Montague, strike three, tough pitch. That brings up Jim Lindeman, who was a doubtful starter a day or so ago. He's had a bad back, and he also has a touch of the flu, but like any kid with the opportunity, he's not going to miss playing in this one. So here he is, fouled away. Lindeman, during the regular year, had eight home runs, and hit only a little above 200. They play the outfield and first base. Lindemann's strikeout mark, he struck out more than 20% of the time. One and one. Ed Montague, the plate umpire, Dave Pallone, Eric Gregg, and Jim Quick are on the line. Bob Engel on the left field foul line and John Kibler last night's plate umpire in the shade and right. That's the cool area. Later in the game the shadows will play a part I'm sure. It gets tougher here as the afternoon rolls along. Foul back. On deck Jose Okindo. He has played every position except catch. He even pitched in a blowout. <laughs> One and two. 
the thing of the private catcher like Melvin and Trevecki is really nothing new. I mean, it's gone on for a long time. It's just a case of a guy just being right in sync with his catcher and just feels better. It's as simple as all that. Fouled away. Of course, if you can hit, that'll also help. Yeah, and help. Dodgers ever have him like that? I'm trying to remember. Of course, when Campanella played, you didn't dare no. say that uh, you didn't want to pitch to him. Or you know? when Yogi was catching. Right. I guess the most famous is McCarver and Carlton. And Carlson. Jimmy even said when they die, he's going to be buried 60 feet, 6 inches from Carlton. So they were pretty close. Zane Smith with Atlanta. And, Simmons. and Ted Simmons catches him. When you caught, was did you have a specific pitcher? Paulette. Howard Paulette. Two and two. Fisted. And Luke into center. Base hit. So Lindemann strong enough to get jammed and still push it into center field. And a two out single will bring up Jose Akindo. Lindemann a big guy. Uh, Drebecki looks like he comes inside and he just muscled it out there. Jose Akindo yet another switch hitter but interestingly enough his success depends on what position he plays. Can you believe this. When he's an infielder, he hits like an infielder. He hit 254 this year. When he's an outfielder, he hits like an outfielder, hitting 301. How <laughs> you figure that out? The chameleon, Jose Oquindo. Strike. His batting coach, Johnny Lewis, really proud of this young guy because he said he's done it with just hard work. Hard work. One home run, he hit it right handed. He's up there with Lindemann at first, two out in the second, and of course Kevin Mitchell's play is a big play now in this inning. Foul ball right behind Nick Leva. 0 oh and 2 the count to Akindo with Tony Pena hitting back of him. With Akindo in there, that means six of the nine are switch hitters. Joined us a little late in the second inning. Maldonado singled and Will Clark hit a home run. And it's 2 0 Giants, bottom of the second. Lindemann hasn't played that much. He has stolen three out of four. But they still check that bench. Melvin looking over there to see what Craig wants to do. 0 oh 2. Foul back. When Roger Craig talks about calling pitch outs and he talks about how he gets a feeling about the opposing base runners he says if you really watch base runners you can almost see when they're going to go if they get assigned to go they might suddenly fix their cap they do something different in their lead there's something about their face and he's quite a student of the art he really is he he believes that whether you're robbing a bank or stealing second base a thief will do something different oh and to the count. Busted bat, ground ball down to Robbie Thompson. And that will do it for Okindo and his bat. No runs, one hit, a man left. And at the end of two, the Giants two, the Cardinals nothing. And a big play by Kevin Mitchell in the inning. We'll be back after these messages from your local station. Sunday on Our House. I made the team. Jesse falls for David's coach. Another date? But will team pressure tear them apart? You quit the team. Sunday. When was the last time you had some fun? I mean real fun. Not Pinochle with Aunt Minnie or a slasher movie with the neighbors, but real fun. That's what I thought. Then why don't you go over to Teletrack in New Haven, pick your favorite horse, and place a bet on him. It only takes $2. And if he wins, it may redefine the word fun for you. And if he loses, well, you can always go back to Pinochle with Aunt Minnie. Teletrack, more fun than Pinochle with Aunt Minnie. Connecticut Valley Olds dealer. I want to do. Attention, lottery fans! Double cash. The Connecticut Lottery's newest instant game is here. But be careful, very careful. You have no idea how big double cash can be. To avoid embarrassing situations, always. 
wear loose clothing. Never rub alone. And never play double cash in an enclosed space. Because double cash is big, very big. Play double cash. And don't say we didn't warn you. Heart to Heart, weekdays at 4 on WBIT 30. Game 2 of the 1987 National League Championship Series is brought to you by Mobile One Synthetic Motor Oil. Mobile One protects your engine better than any conventional motor oil. And by Embassy Suites Hotel, where you get a beautiful two-room suite for the price of a single room. Vin, I was just paying particular attention to Tudor warming up between innings getting ready and remembering what Morales said that they'll throw the pitch they feel most comfortable with. He only threw one curveball in all his warm-up pitches. They were either fastballs or change of speeds. Well, we'll see now how that's applied to a pitcher, Dave Drevecki. Drevecki has one home run in his career. He hit it last year against a left-hander. It was Dennis Powell of the Dodgers. He has a rip and fouls it back 0-1. Two to nothing in favor of the Giants, top of the third. Oh, and two. Of course, the biggest hit thus far was a base hit by a pitcher, Greg Matthews, base hit last night to drive in two. One and two, the count of Drebecki. He'll be followed by Robbie Thompson and then Kevin Mitchell. Hit that on the end of the bat. Out in front of it. Still one and two. Bill Fahey coaching at first. Don Zimmer over at third. Ground ball to Ozzie Smith. Robbie Thompson coming up, the second baseman for the Giants. He flied to center in the first inning. So Robbie in the series, 0 for 4. Second baseman, Robbie Thompson. 2 nothing Giants, top of the third, one away. Thompson followed by Kevin Mitchell. Tomorrow at travel day and then Friday night at Candlestick Park. Either Joe McGrain or Danny Cox against Atley Hamaker. And then whoever doesn't start Friday will go against Mike Kruko on Saturday. One ball and one strike. Two to ten and two during the year. Coming back remarkably well after that freak accident. Barry Lyons of the Mets chasing a foul ball when sliding into the Cardinal dugout and Tudor wound up with a broken tibia. Hit off the end of the stick another pool room shot. Two down. He has really had good control Tudor has of the off speed pitches and he was way out in front of that one after being way out in front of the second strike. And he hits it right off the end of the bat, has a little trouble getting out of that batter's box, but I tell you, he's really changing speeds well. It's interesting, this, the pitcher who was least successful thus far is the fellow who threw the hardest, Todd Worrell. And he was throwing 96, 97, yeah. But Kevin all the Mitchell. same. Struck out in the first inning. Mitchell made a good play on that ball hit by Terry Pendleton, and that played a major part in retiring the Cardinals. Lindemann had a two out single instead of maybe a couple of men on base. Oh and two. Before those two pitches Vin, just a recap of how Hardy was thrown. 83 was the fastest. 82, 71, 83, 76, 76. It's like his bingo card got wet. Right. And the one ball that was hit, the base hit, fastball to Maldonado was 85. 0 oh and 2, the count to Kevin Mitchell. The radar gun will tell you how fast, but it doesn't tell you the movement. No. It cannot. The, the batter will tell you that. Mitchell a hitter with Jeffrey Leonard on deck. 
fouled away. Now there was his fastball, but he had changed up so much that he got it by Mitchell. He's not afraid to come inside. That's the big thing about him, as we mentioned. Here's a left-hander pitching in Fenway, not afraid to pitch inside, and that tells you a lot about his confidence. That was another 85. One and two. Ground ball inside first. Nice play by Lindemann to the bag. So the Giants retired in order as Jim Lindemann comes up with a dandy. And at the end of two and a half, two nothing San Francisco. In 1973, a small bar served the first light beer. The response was unanimous. Tastes great. Here was a beer with its own special brewing process. Less filling. It's brewed to be light with only the finest quality ingredients. Tastes great. It's less filling. Tastes Today there are lots of lights around, but none are brewed like Miller Light, and none can match the taste. Tastes great. Less filling. Tastes great. For great taste, there's only one light beer, Miller Light. Do you have anything in aviation? The Army's most technical training. Are there any openings in communications? Is also the Army's most popular training. I'd really like computers. So it pays to have a reservation. Electronics. If you qualify, you can get a guaranteed reservation for the training you want up to 12 months in advance, even if you're still in high school. All that you can be. We'll see you after graduation. <laughs> Find your futures in the arms. Congratulations. Okay, honey. Can you tell who hasn't had their Kellogg's Bran Flakes? Hang in there, honey. Well, some people feel a little sluggish if they're not eating a balanced diet. Oh, boy, am I sluggish. Kellogg's are the only Bran Flakes with fiber and a full-day supply of iron to help balance your diet. And that's one great way to help fight that sluggish feeling. So, maybe you can tell who hasn't had their Kellogg's Bran Flakes. Great shot, honey. And who has. Kellogg's Bran Flakes, the fiber and iron cereal. The gateway to the west, St. Louis, Missouri. He'll be due up second in the inning. We wanted to show you Barry Lyons going into the dugout, and you can see Tudor started up as if to get out of the way, and Lyons just kept crashing in there. Tommy Herr avoided Lyons, and Tudor out with a broken leg. A one in a million freak accident. And Tudor being led from the dugout, and to be honest, when that happened, most people pretty well wrote the Cardinals off. Certainly did. Tudor came back. Uh, it, it was a tribute to his dedication and the uh, whole rehab program that he had to go through because uh, it looked like his season was over and the year was over for St. Louis. And did he come back? Eight wins and only one loss. In the third, Tony Pena, John Tudor, and Vince Coleman. Pena struggling on two fronts. He's struggling here, and it also hurts him to know that the three men for whom he was traded had such good years for Pittsburgh. Whoop. Trevecki will come inside. He'll keep you honest. He won't <laughs> let you lean over. Uh, I tell you, it's the old story. You show me a pitcher that comes inside, and I'll show you a pretty good pitcher. You show me one that doesn't, and you've got a 9 and 15 pitcher. Three balls and no strikes to Tony. That's in there. Three and one. Bottom of the third, two to nothing in favor of San Francisco. Ball four. So Fanny opens up with a walk. And Tudor followed by Coleman and Smith. As far as Tudor's numbers are concerned with the bat, he has seven hits. Good for five runs batted in. And usually the key to a pitcher. If he strikes out less than half the time, that makes him dangerous. Well, if that's a rule of thumb, then Tudor is dangerous because in 35 at bats, he struck out only six times. That would make him handy. And Clark gets his defensive set up from the bench, Craig. Uh, Mitchell's in close. Clark will be charging hard. Down by two, they still might play for the bunt to stay out of the double play, which is another strong point for the Giants. Remember, the Giants led the major leagues in double plays. You see Clark walking over there. He's telling him, now I'm going to go in all the way, so don't back off, or I'm going to go in a little bit and come back and set it up. Keith Hernandez is the one who does that best, but uh, what just happened there should not happen, whether you're first and third baseman to charge, and then you back off the mound. Tudor with Coleman on deck. 
Clark charging then stops then comes again to pitch a strike and Tudor after being around a bunt pulled the bat back as if he was going to swing and that's reason for another meeting. Well Dravecki is kind of breaking up that play and they're going to have to make sure and Robbie Thompson comes in and he took charge right there and said come on you guys you're going to do one or the other you're either going to charge and throw the ball or you're going to wait and see what happens but there's a lot of indecision and Dravecki is the guy who has to quarterback that. And Tudor now looking at Dink Labor to see if the bun sign is still on and he's asking Labor to go through it again. Well it was on I guarantee you when charging hard it just switched off but right now you would have to look for the bunt but Trebek has got to give his guys a chance. Oh and one the count of John Tudor with Pena at first two nothing Giants in the third and they pitch out and they got Pena going and the throw got him as Uribe pinned him. Roger Craig I tell you he's uncanny. I mean, Pena had not done anything, and then Melvin, and well, perfect throw on the pitch out. And you can tell these Giants work on that play. Now, Melvin, look at that ball he gets to handle, and watch where he throws it right to the first base side. Uribe just has to drop the glove and then forget about it. He no bunt, no worry about anything now. Melvin, during the regular year, threw out 40% of the runners, including Vince Coleman twice. He has a even a better arm than Bob Brenly. And remember the combination gave the Giants the best success ratio in frustrating enemy base dealers. Two pitch outs and both times they worked one last night and one today. Three and one to count to John Tudor. Three and two. And you get a wide angle view of it. Now painting a pretty good start. Melvin may have even gone out a little bit too soon, but look at this throw right there. Just catch the ball and drop the glove. One away and a full count to John Tudor. Got him. So it shows you how quickly an inning can start and suddenly be turned off. And, and just to the pitch out play that Craig uses so effectively is probably one of the most botched up plays of any of them because pitchers will hurry their throws catchers will get out too soon pitchers will throw too hard but it's obvious that the Giants worked on that from spring training on talking about pitch outs with Roger and he was talking about one of his pitches who shall be nameless and he said he threw a 50 mile an hour pitch out because he was aiming and he said I really get on my pitchers backs to throw that ball hard on a pitch out. And Rebecca did, and it paid off. The most he's ever called is three on one batter. That's a lot. And how? Oh, and two, the count to Vince Coleman. We have two down in the third. Giants leading two to nothing on a two run home run by Will Clark. Coleman flied to right field, first trip. In there. Strike three called. Three strikeouts for Dravecki, but the pitch out really scrambled the Cardinals' eggs in the third. At the end of three, two nothing Giants. Here's a look back at a very special Olympic moment. An Olympic moment brought to you by the Prudential, offering a full range of insurance and other financial services. The Prudential. Montreal, 1976. 14-year-old Nadja Komenich of Romania wins the gold medal in the uneven parallel bars, the balance beam, and finally is named all-around individual champion, receiving perfect scores of 10 on seven occasions. Nadja Komenich, one of the great performances in Olympic history. We go above and beyond just like you, above and beyond what we have to do, investing in what's right for you. Your Prudential representative helps your money work hard with CDs, mutual funds, and more. You work hard, so do we, to make what you work for a reality. From us, from Prudential, above and beyond. Michael's The Silk Alagene. Keeps fresh, flashy, and unique. The hottest new name in the middleweight division. Frank Tate. This unbeaten Olympic gold medalist seems to have no weaknesses. Glitter versus gold. The IBF middleweight championship live on NBC Sports World. Well, I think they pretty much pitch identical. They throw pitches off the plate. They try to get you to take their pitch. They'll pitch around guys they don't want to pitch to, and, and they're not going to overpower you. They're more of a finesse type pitcher. They try to get a hitter off balance, and if you allow them to, you're not going to be successful against them. 
And Chili Davis has suffered. He struck out twice last night against Greg Matthews, and he struck out his first at-bat today against John Suter. So he can give you chapter and verse about those two tricky left-handers. But remember, he is the number one giant as far as success against left-hand pitching. Two nothing giants on the home run by Will Clark with Maldonado aboard. Now it'll be Leonard, Maldonado, and Davis. And with Maldonado on deck, he stops, and Jose Morales, his tutor, is just giving him all kinds of instructions as he stands in front of him. Jeffrey Leonard grounded out in the first inning. Maldonado hitting back of him has already chatted with Morales. Leonard has certainly grown up as a hitter and become a power hitter. When he was in the Dodger minor league system and was eventually traded to Houston, the feeling was he didn't have any power. But as he matured physically, he has gone to the long ball. He hit 19 during the regular year. And anybody who saw him hit one into the empty seats in center last night, you have an idea just how strong he is. Another drive to center. McGee going back to the track at the wall, and it is gone. Leonard has hit another. And we can just sit down and relax because he takes his time. Oh, he was running hard thinking it was going to stand apart till he saw it go in the seats. And then he put that thing in about the third gear, and here he comes around third now. The crowd is reacting as they started, I guess, in Chicago at Wrigley Field. On an opposing home run, they throw the ball disdainfully back on the field. And they've done it twice here today. Here's the swing. He kind of goes out and gets it. Now, he's not, oh, he thinks maybe, but uh, he goes pretty good now. He's not sure right here. But watch when he rounds first base and he sees it go over. Right there. Whoa, let's enjoy it. Yeah, watch the hurry. <laughs> I don't blame him. No, it is three to nothing Giants here in the fourth inning, and Candy Maldonado, who's singled in the second, starting it off. Two and all the count. Chili Davis hitting back of him. Candy, a line drive single in the second inning. Good play by Vince Coleman racing towards the line to hold it to a single. And then, of course, you remember Maldonado started back to the bag on the pitch to Clark, then stopped on the long drive to right and was coming back to first as Clark's ball went out for a home run. Good play by Don Zimmer. Interesting the fortunes of baseball. When Don Zimmer was the manager at San Diego, one of his coaches was Roger Cray. <laughs> He's a beauty. Oh, Popeye, boy. He is something special. Two and two to Maldonado. Good change, and Maldonado way out in front of it. Boy, John Tudor, his third strikeout. Not only does he change speeds well, watch where he spots it. He does get this up, but I mean, it's not close to the strike zone. It's out. If you're going to miss, miss away from him. If he misses inside with that one, he's in deep trouble. It'll bring up Chili Davis, who struck out in the second inning. Giants three runs, three hits. Cardinals no runs, one hit. On the corner. John Tudor stung by a two-run home run by Will Clark, and now this one to center field by Jeffrey Leonard. Leonard's ball really carried exceptionally well on a cool afternoon. Last night that ball carried. I mean, it's 414 dead yeah. center, and that's a long way. On one. And another one on that outside corner. Chili Davis can't quite believe it, but the count's 0 and 2. And the first time up was off speed pitches. This time, two fastballs right on that corner. One and two. When the Cardinals bat in the bottom of the fourth, Ozzie Smith, Tommy Herr, and then Terry Pendleton. Still one and two. Pena gives Tudor such a low target, and that's a constant reminder to your pitcher, but it also gives the umpire a pretty good view of every pitch. Just laid off 
and it just missed. Remember, Tudor has beaten the Giants four straight. In his 16 starts this year, the Cardinals won 14 of them. Two and two. High pop fly off first base. Lindemann just inside the foul line and puts it away. Friends, once again, we'd like to remind our viewers we'll be selecting the NBC Miller Lite player of the game at the conclusion of the ball game. First base. Then the most Will famous picture I know of for looking away from the hitter, of course, I think is Valenzuela. Yeah. But Tudor gives you a little bit of that in his delivery. He doesn't keep his eyes glued on that hitter. He turns away and looks, kind of looks towards first base. Very distracting to a hitter. Here's Will Clark. They hit that home run to right in the second inning. He hit seven home runs against left hand pitchers during the regular year. And he has that graceful slightly uppercut swing that hits a lot of towering fly balls. The ball he hit last night with the bases loaded. He just got under it. He's one of those guys that the way he takes the bat out of the bat rack says I am a hitter. He hit 320 against left handers so he certainly doesn't give or bail out at all. Two and one. We talked about it last night. He says he hangs in there even a little bit more and gets jammed more by left handers because he doesn't want to open up too soon and he wants to keep that front shoulder right in there. Two and one the count to Will Clark. Cued foul outside of third down the line. Of course you can't mention Will Clark without thinking of Jack Clark. And Jack just has to sit quietly in the Cardinal dugout and die a little as each inning goes by and deep alone in his thoughts. Three and two the count to Will. Jack of course was such a mainstay for St. Louis. He was such an important player for the Giants. Three and two. Dan Dreesen played first base last night in his stead and today Jim Lindemann. But it's just virtually impossible to replace a man who had 35 home runs and 106 RBIs. There's a drive into left center field for a base hit. McGee over to cut it off. Clark will hold on. He wanted to make him throw. I tell you, Will Clark, it's, it's something to talk to a young hitter and listen to him say to you like he did last night and again today. My game plan is this. Get that ball inside. I'm going to pull it, but I'm going up there to hit the ball up the middle and to the left field line and just wait on that ball. And, and usually you think a young guy's up there hacking. He's got a real good idea. And he is loaded with confidence. Oh, is he ever? And, and that's what you have to have. I mean, uh, the late and great Pete Reeser used to say you have to have inner arrogance. Know that you're good. Don't wear it on your sleeve. Just keep it inside. And all the good ones have it. Well, here's Melvin. He flied to right field in the second inning. Oh, and one. Clark at first. A run in here in the fourth, and the Giants leading three to nothing. He's really got Clark breaking back so far, I'll tell you. Clark is not a good base runner, even though he had a stolen base last night because Ozzie Smith kind of backed off as if he might be spiked. He has stolen five bases and was caught 17 times. There he goes, and it's a hit and run fly ball. Whoa. Vince Coleman puts it away. Melvin had a tough time getting out of that box. One run, two hits, one left. Jeffrey Leonard hits a home run into the center field seats, and the Giants lead 3-0. Mitsubishi knows you want a truck to be tough. tough and enough. But we also know you want more for your money. Tough and enough and more. Mitsubishi Mighty Max trucks give you more. Up to 2.6 liters of power, a five-speed stick, more standard features for less than Toyota, Nissan, or Mazda. Even the lowest priced macro can. Tough and enough. The new Mitsubishi Mighty Max trucks. Tough and enough and more. Mitsubishi, suddenly the obvious choice. They'll cut me right off at the bottom line. Maybe I better not show it to them. No doubt in my mind, it's a case we can win. There's one airline that knows its business so well, it actually lets you keep your mind on yours. Three-part strategy. United, 
rededicated to giving you the service you deserve. That guy's flying tonight. There's tomorrow. We all fly on Thursday. Come fly the friendly skies. I got this covered or what? Tomorrow's best real estate investments are taking shape today. Now more than ever, you need the same up-to-date information that real estate experts have. That's why Century 21 offices are introducing Investor Days. With our investor workshops and this free booklet, which includes current tax guidelines, you can start building for the future today. Don't miss Century 21 Investor Days, October 12th through the 18th. To real food. You know the kind that just tastes real good. Go on a dinner I can't pronounce. I want to buy a bottle of ounce. I never have some to real food. You know the kind that just tastes real good. Give me a steak and I won't be through. I got a taste for some real food. Thief. Real food for real people. Three-nothing Giants. Remember in the third inning when Clark, Will Clark, hesitated on an apparent bunt situation? Now he's getting a crash course on the special signs for that play as to when to come all the way. Ozzie Smith lined out to left in the first inning. He's 0 for 1. Usually, Vin, when you rub across like that, it means no or don't come. Or, uh, rubbing down or nothing would mean come on ahead. One and one, Ozzy, trying to get something started here for the Cardinals in the bottom of the fourth. They have just one hit, a looping single to center by Jim Lindemann in the second inning. That's it, foul out of play. And the count one and two, and Ozzy cracked his bat. He'll have to get another. Remember, we talked earlier about Dravecki. When he's got good stuff, we'll break bats. That's the second one. He got Okendo, and now he's got Ozzy Smith. Uh, it's, it's just one of those ways you check a guy. And Dravecki, uh, if he breaks the bats, got pretty good stuff. I wonder if they keep a record on that. Most bats broken by a left-hand pitcher in league championship series. Come on, Elliot. Daytime. Daytime. Ozzie coming back. He hit the ball pretty hard in the first inning, but he lined out right to Jeffrey Leonard in left field. That's, of course, a minimum 10 games and 30 at-bats. One and two. Two and two. Kind of important when you're down trying to shake the ball club up to get your leadoff man on. Ozzie has a great hitting record on a 3-2 count. Let's see what he does in this spot. When he's 3-2, he is he's quite a hitter. And he's aboard. Now that's the second time the leadoff man has reached on a walk. Pena opened up the third with a walk. And Whitey now trying to build a fire with her Pendleton and McGee coming up for Dravecki his second walk he's allowed just one hit Tommy her wants to talk to Nick Labor well he can handle that bat pretty obvious uh, and what he's looking for is make sure and it may be because of those pitch outs that they made quick changes in the dugout saying well maybe he does know something and Tommy her doing what he should do if he's not so positive about the sign call your coach that's one thing the Cardinals feared that Craig might intimidate some of the runners because of his success and so far he's two for two and that might not intimidate you but it certainly is making them think twice at this stage. Almost threw it away. If you're thinking about a straight steal Ozzie stole 43 out of 52 only caught nine times all year. But remember they're down three nothing in the fourth inning. On deck, Kerry Pendleton. They're really giving her a lot of room in left center field. They're shading him in right center field. Smith has a good lead. Melvin constantly checking with Craig. One ball and no strike. So Dravecki walked Pena, got away with it in the third. Walked Smith three and two, and he's behind one ball and no strikes to Tommy Herr. Her is a right-handed batter, makes better contact than he does hitting left-handed. So if you're going to put a play on with him, it's better when he's hitting right. And he promptly hits it up the middle, base hit. 
Rossi to second, and he'll hold. And the Cardinals are alive. Runners at first and second, and nobody out. He just sends it right back up the middle, didn't try to drive it too hard. And there you see it. And now the cleanup hitter, Terry Pendleton, representing the tying run, huddles with Nick Leva. Well, the Cardinals are doing a lot of thinking, but the Giants so far are doing the scoring. I have to believe then they did change something because of uh, Craig's success with the two pitch outs. Because why would you keep, keep having meetings like that? Right. And Pendleton, you remember, hit the ball hard in the second inning. And Kevin Mitchell went up the ladder to one hand it, do a 360, and throw him out. And now Pendleton, the tying run, two on, nobody out. Willie McGee on deck. High fly ball into right field. It's playable. Tagging is Ozzy Smith. Maldonado for the catch in the runner's hole because Candy has a gun. It looked like Ozzy Smith was almost going to try to catch that throw. Do you see the way he put his hands up in the air? I don't know if he's trying to bother Jose Akindo and Eric Gregg is saying, hey, cut that out. He was just having some fun, but he could have got himself in trouble. Now, he does pretend like he's going to catch it. Yeah, sure. Yeah, that that's could have right. been interference. Yeah, I mean, it gets that. by him. It could have cost him. Absolutely. Surprised, but... He was going to try, and now Roger Craig is coming out. And let's see if he goes to the mound or if he's going to Eric Gregg. He is to the left of the mound. I think he's heading towards a second base umpire, and he's going to talk about possible interference or the attempt. I really think what he's doing is playing a little bit of a mind game here because Whitey played a mind game with Dravecki, causing him to change his shirt, and now, if nothing else, Craig is going to show, hey, listen, if they're going to fool around, I want some protection too, so... Remember years ago, I think it was Eddie Stanky and other second basemen suddenly would put their hands up in the air on a pitch to the plate, and they finally had to make sure there was no movement as the pitcher was delivering. Here's that look again. Ozzy looked like he was going to handle the throw from Candy Maldonado, and of course that does block out and screen Jose Uribe slightly. I think what that was was a little boy and Ozzy Smith coming out. And a lot of angry man coming out of the giant dugout That's and Roger Craig. He's on record now. So two on, one out, and Willie McGee struck out in the second inning. Three-nothing Giants, and the Cardinals trying to get back in the ball game here in the fourth. In there. On one. At second base, Ozzie Smith. At first, Tommy Hur. McGee two for five in the series. And there's a fly ball to left. That bat might have broken on that too. Leonard makes the catch. It sounded like he hit it with the morning paper and that could be the third bat that was cracked. It definitely is broken, Ben. So McGee, a little fly ball to left. Two down. And the batter will be Jim Lindemann to hit a flare for a base hit in the second inning in the center field. Lindemann yesterday was very much a questionable starter today. He wasn't sure. He's had back spasms. They kept him out for a lot of games this year. But after hitting yesterday and a good night's sleep, he felt he could play today. And now here he is in a jackpot spot. Three-nothing Giants, fourth inning, two out. Strike. You just saw one little thing in there, and I, I guess having been a catcher, I noticed it, but Melvin only gave two signs, and Trevecki already went into his stretch, so his other three meant absolutely nothing. Oh, and one to count. High fly ball playable, and Jeffrey Leonard says it's catchable. And it is. No runs, one hit, and two left. At the end of four, three nothing Giants. We'll be back after these messages from your local station. On Cosby, Rudy's in trouble with Bob. It's not fair. And Dad's caught in the middle. Were you not paying attention? That no, was a trick. Cosby, Thursday. Your Connecticut Chevy dealers are ready to reveal the new, redesigned 1988 Chevy Cavalier. <laughs> what? And here's the moment you've all been waiting for. Oh, 
there you have the whole new 1988 Chevy Cavalier. It's still there, isn't it? You and me and Chevy Bay Street. 91 Bravo proceeding on rescue training mission. One weekend a month, you can take off for the beach, the mountains, or a drive in the country in the Army Reserve. Subject spotted. Be all that you can. It's no picnic, but it's the kind of excitement no other weekend offers. Mission completed. We're heading home. And you'll still have three weekends a month to take off on your own. Find your future in the Army Reserve. Shaler, Hoffman, Liberty, Torrington, and Manchester. Hollywood Squares, tonight at 7 at WBIT 30. Friends, a reminder, this telecast presented by authority of Major League Baseball and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form without the express written consent of Major League Baseball. A reminder, it's a big day of Major League Baseball on NBC. Our game this afternoon, moving to the fifth inning, 3-0 Giants, and tonight... The Detroit Tigers and the Minnesota Twins. It'll start at 8 p.m. with Major League Baseball and Inside Look. John Tudor in four innings has made 66 pitches, 45 strikes, 21 balls. The home run, though, has kind of gotten to him so far. Remember, the Giants hit 16 home runs against the Cardinals during the regular season, nine of them here. And they come right back and they have hit three home runs here so far in 13 innings. Strike to Jose Uribe, followed by Dave Drabecki and then Robbie Thompson. Uribe fouled out to Lindemann back in the second inning. And pops it up into shallow center. Tommy Herr going out with Ozzy, and it falls between Ozzy and Willie McGee. He called for it. At least he put up his gloved hand, but McGee evidently did not see it. And that dropped amongst them. Her, Smith, and McGee. That should have been caught. It should have been caught. That's just bad playing. Ozzie could make it, and now you can see he gets run it's off the ball by okay. McGee. He was going to make the play, and all of a sudden you see him veer right there, and McGee can't get to it. Smith's got to go out and try to make the catch on any ball, but the center fielder has to run everybody off and make sure of it. So Uribe gets a gift double. And Drabecki, who is a pretty fair bunter, gets one down. Tudor is going to let it roll, and Pendleton picks it up. And it'll be a bunt single for Dave Drabecki. So on a pop fly and a bunt, the Giants are in business, first and third, and nobody out. And Robbie Thompson coming up. I think.
Sparks home run in the second inning. Leonard a pretty good lead but he was going back to the bag. Normally a pitcher is like Pavlov's dog on AstroTurf. If the base run is foot steps and touches on the rug it's like a bell goes off and he salivates and throws over there. And Leonard's right foot is on the rug but he was intimidated and he was going the other way. Leading three to nothing, Roger Craig is looking ahead to shore up defensively, and Eddie Milner is loosening up down in the giant bullpen to go in the outfield. He's widened his lead as if to draw a throw. Ball one, one and two. Leonard, during the regular year, stole 16 out of 23. Three runs, seven hits for the Giants. No runs, two hits for the Cardinals. Well, that's the second time that Maldonado has gone down on strikes. And the batter will be Chili Davis. And for John Tudor, five strikeouts. Same number as Dravecki. Chili Davis struck out and popped up 0 for 2. Remember at the start of the game we told you that Tudor at least his numbers tell you he is a six inning pitcher exactly he's in the sixth inning now losing and for the second time today bullpen activity in the Cardinal pen there's a shot up the middle base hit Leonard will hold at second. So Chili Davis, a line single to put runners at first and second, one out, and Will Clark coming up. That's eight hits off John Tudor. Will Clark, two for two, hit the two run home run and single. Davis will now give way to Eddie Milner who figures to play center field the remainder of the game anyway. So Milner taking over running for Davis and then he'll stay in. So first and second one out in the six Giants three Cardinals nothing. Giants trying to split here then go to Candlestick for three. Friday night either Joe McGrain or Danny Cox against Atlee Hamaker. Ball one to Will Clark. Bob Melvin on deck. Clark is three for six, hitting 500 in the series. And he has already hit a home run. One ball, one strike. Talking to me, Vinny, also. He gives Keith Hernandez of all people a lot of credit saying that Hernandez said to him learn the catchers learn the pattern of the catchers and what that means is that most catchers will call for the pitch in the jam that they themselves can't hit fake to second base Jeffrey landed back yeah I guess that would be human sure and if you learn the catchers pattern and the pitchers put it all together and and blessed with tremendous eye hand coordination speed and all kinds of God given talent you might hit little number back to the box Tudor's going to go to first base he couldn't quite make up his mind I think on whether he was going to throw to Tommy her or not and opted for the cinch out at first so you have two down and Melvin coming up if that ball had been hit hardy it was going to go to second base for a double play but the fact that he hit it off the end of the bat it's a big look like a big breaking curve ball he hits it off the end of the bat it is. And watch him. He's undecided because he doesn't think it's hit hard enough. His idea to go to second, he really loses it and makes sure he gets the one man out. And here comes Mike Rourke. He wants to talk to him. Mike Rourke going out with some instructions, I'm sure, from Whitey Herzog. First base is open, and he might just be saying to Tudor, a veteran and a most successful pitcher, would you rather pitch to Melvin or put him on and take your best shot against your rebate? Who do you want is what he's asking him. And of course, it's going to be one of those things. Uh, if he decides that you rebate, uh, 
to make Melvin maybe chase a bad ball. I see more pitchers get in trouble there because the batter will widen that zone, get a base hit, and you don't go back and tell the manager, well, it was outside. <laughs> well, Melvin hit a fly ball to right and a fly ball to left. Uribe fouled out and hit the pop fly that was allowed to drop amongst the Cardinals for the pop fly double. So you take your choice. Well, watch Tony Pena. It would appear as if he's going to settle in a crouch. He does, so they're pitching to Melvin. Second and third, two out in the sixth, three nothing Giants. Ball one, one and oh. will do is try not to pull the ball and stay with it and go to the opposite field and that way he won't be flying open too soon and they think he can hit better that way Leonard down the line from third Eddie Milner the runner at second base ball two trying to sneak that ball over at the knees two and one shadows now starting to play havoc in right field it almost looks like spotlights out there Two and one. All three. Well, I think Vin right here, if I were hitting, if I were right, oh, they're going to put him on. Yep. So they kept giving him pitches down and away, hoping he'd go with it and hit a ground ball to her or Lindemann. He wouldn't bite, so they put him on. John Tudor, that is his first walk. And now with the bases loaded, he has to get the number eight hitter, Jose Uribe. He's been getting him by throwing that ball to the outside part of the plate. And the only way that Uribe can take it away is to get on top of that plate and force Tudor to come inside. So far, he hasn't done that. So Uribe trying to break it open. Three-nothing Giants, top of the sixth. The Cardinals will have Coleman, Smith, and Her in the bottom of the sixth. Leonard, Milner, and Melvin at the ready. Ball one. Uribe is a switch hitter, and if you wonder about bringing in a right-hander, Uribe's hit over 300 as a left-handed batter. He's hitting about 250 right-handed. Consequently, they're staying with Tudor rather than go to Bob Forsh. That would turn him around. And he's way outside. Now he's he's not missing by a little. Two and all the count. Herzog and his pitching coach Mike Rourke sweating it out. Two balls and no strikes to Jose Uribe. I really think I'd have him taken, but the way things have been going, they more than likely have the hit sign on. Uribe doesn't walk very much at all during the regular year. And he's behind 3-0. and oh. So after nibbling with Melvin, and that might very well have broken his rhythm and broken his idea of the strike zone, finally walk him, and now he can't throw a strike. It could be, except that he did exactly what he wanted to do to Melvin. He threw that ball where he wanted it on the outside part that played out of the zone to make sure that he wouldn't be a, a good strike to hit, and if he chased it, uh, he'd make an out. But, boy, he has really missed badly here. Three balls and no strikes to Jose Uribe. He walked only 24 times all year. That's right. Now what do you do? Do you let him hit? All year, and looking at his numbers, he doesn't walk and he doesn't strike out. So I assume hitting eighth, Roger has had him swinging. Oh, he's going to turn him loose here, the way things have been going all year. You have to look for him if he gets a pitch that he likes to go to whacking on it. But he's really got to discipline himself to pick a zone and make sure it's the pitch he wants. Big pitch for John Tudor. And it's a ground ball. Hit to Ozzy, and he will feed her, and he's out of the jam. For the Giants in the sixth inning, no runs, two hits, and three left. At the end of five and a half, three nothing San Francisco. Hey, great. Let's 
at Miller Lite. We'd just like to say we're sorry if we might be responsible for prolonging the football strike. Here's hoping they settle it soon. Tastes great! Let's spell it! Tastes great! Let's My grandfather was a carpenter. My dad's a carpenter. Yes, building things is in my blood. The Sawcat, from the industrial tool division of Black & Decker. Tough ball and roller bearings, cut steel helical gears for precision and power, job after job. You know, you start in the morning, there's nothing. And at the end of the day, there's proof you've been there. Ask a man who's used one lately. Nothing beats a Black & Decker. Warn, the number one dental problem isn't cavities, it isn't tartar, it's plaque. And brushing alone doesn't get enough plaque off your teeth. The solution is plaques, the pre-brushing rinse that removes 300% more plaque than brushing alone. Sunday, the NFL plays here when the Chiefs battle the Dolphins. Before your team takes the field, our team hits the air. NFL Live! In 1970, the Minnesota Twins lost the American League Championship Series to Baltimore. And now, 17 years later, the Twins return to try it again. They'll battle the Detroit Tigers in Game 1 of the American League Championships tonight at 8 p.m. Eastern right here on NBC. It all begins with Major League Baseball, an inside look. The traditions are here. The memories are waiting. You betcha, right here on NBC Sports. Eddie Milner, who ran for Chili Davis, stays in the game in center field. And the Cardinals, trying to mount an attack, will have Vince Coleman, Ozzie Smith, and Tommy Hurd. The Cardinals have only been shut out four times during the regular season. So if you can throw a blanket over them, you've really accomplished something. And Drevecki has kept them quiet for five innings. Foul back out of play. The closest thing to a rally in the fourth inning, Ozzie Smith walked and Tommy Hurst singled. But Pendleton flied to right, McGee and Lindemann flied to left. Drevecki has allowed only two hits. A looping single to center by Lindemann and a base hit by her. A bunt, foul. 0 and 2. Of course, the Giants basic defense is to keep Coleman off the bases. He reached twice last night, but they threw him out trying to steal. He had singled and walked, and he's over two today. Coleman, Smith, and her. If anybody gets on Pendleton. Vince with 109 stolen bases, only caught 22 times. And if you walk him, you almost feel like you've given up a double. Yes, sir. The report on him is he can turn a walk into a triple. This is as far as Dravecki wants to go. He wants to make it happen right here on the 2 2. He do not want to take him 3 2. Two balls, two strikes. Ball three. Boy, that was a big pitch John Tudor made. Going 3 and 0, 3 and 1, and then getting with the bases loaded. Yes, sir. Well, the good ones do it. The Herzog got off the hook there. Now he's trying to put Craig on the hook with his leadoff man, Coleman. 3 and 2 to Vince. And he walked him. Two breaking balls. And he got the 2 and 2 and threw a curveball and threw a curveball 3 and 2. Interesting that Drevecki has walked three batters, all three leadoff men. Pena in the third, Smith in the fourth, Coleman in the sixth. Now Ozzie, line to left and walk. Ozzie has his own particular sign with Vince Coleman about putting on hit and run plays. It is distinct and separate from all the other signs on the club. And whether Ozzie wants to try and light a fire by putting on a show or letting Coleman run, 
They're down three nothing here in the six and Ozzie checking with Nick Labor. He has great concentration batting second because he's got to give Coleman a chance to take off. Of course it's three nothing but that doesn't mean a thing. You still have to look for Coleman to go. One ball and no strikes. I think Coleman would love to steal a base to wake up the crowd and also wake up his ball club. And he is just the type of runner who can do that. He can have that kind of effect. Craig calls all the throws to first base and the pitch outs. Bob Brindley going down to the giant bullpen. One ball and no strikes to Ozzie Smith. Tommy Hur on deck. Three nothing Giants bottom of the sixth. Dravecki just freezing him by holding. Fouled away. If you can just change your tempo so that the runner can't dance to it, you have a chance, and that was Dravecki is trying to do. Plus, just hold it and hold look it. at him and freeze him. A lot of times you'll see him stop it to right about at the letters and sometimes at the belt, but if they can just hold it once they come to the set position, it'll just take the spring right out of the runner's legs. Don Robinson and left-handed Joe Price throwing in the giant bullpen. One and one. Melvin is two for two as far as getting Coleman. You know, it's interesting. We showed you a graphic that said Coleman's success ratio is 84%, but it's only in the 30s against the Giants. One and one. And he's not going, and the ball hit down the right field line. Foul. Vince was a little tentative. He had already dug a hole to push off. And as he started, he was looking at Ozzie and then finally decided he didn't have enough of a jump anyway. He has an uncanny ability to be able to look into the catcher uh, on his first two steps, even though it's full tilt. Yeah, and that's where he can, on a pitch out, stop and get back. One and two. This is just what we figured to see Roger Craig trying to outmaneuver the Cardinals with pitch outs and throws to first and the Cardinals trying to get their base runners going. Coleman has him measured I mean as far as the distance and he's also got his little starting blocks built up. You know I was wondering if you were a scout can you imagine the concentration trying to pick off what Coleman does just before he steals It'd be worth a lot of money wouldn't it. It sure would. Ground ball up the middle, flagged by Uribe on the bag for one over to Will Clark, double play. And the Giants come up with their specialty, the double play. And the thing that Trevecki did, he kind of quick pitched there because he had Coleman stop dead. And uh, it, it's a perfect double play ball, and Coleman is not even close to taking the uh, infielder Uribe out of the play. He just takes it himself, and he makes sure this time he taps that bag. You can see how far Ozzie Smith was out. So the number one team in the major leagues in turning double plays uses that as a weapon and with two down in the sixth inning Tommy Herr coming up. Interesting in the old days you always said if a team led in double plays you said yeah it was a bad team and there were a lot of base runners on all the time but here's here's a division winner leading the majors and they also lead an earned run average so that would certainly blow that theory out. Two balls and no strikes to Tommy Herr. Terry Pendleton on deck. Three nothing Giants. Two out in the sixth inning. Three times the Cardinals have gotten a leadoff man on in six innings, but they've been unable to do anything. And if you can shut down the Cardinals here, especially, you're really doing something. They've been shut out only twice this year at home. And by right handers, Rick Sutcliffe and Brian Fisher of the Pirates. Trevecki is uh, he's running up the flag some uh, warning signs here he's three and old here and he's in there with a high strike up around the letters there are little tip offs getting behind the hitters a lot when you weren't doing that uh, take a little bit more time between pitches changing baseballs checking your defense just little tip offs three and one to her and he hits it towards right center but Milner is there so the Cardinals are quiet in the sixth and at the end of six 
Giants three, Cardinals nothing. And we'll be back after these messages from your local station. Raquel Welch, as you never thought you'd see her, her family's love gave her the strength and courage to ask for the right to die. Monday. In Canada, the rivers run a little colder. Some people say you can taste it in the beer. Molson Gold. Molson is Canadian beer. Elizabeth is dead. Next time on Cheers, Diane's pet passes on. She was our family cat. Oh, too bad. And what she needs are a few noble words about the dearly departed. Yeah, you can't flush a cat. A big, strong shoulder to cry on, or maybe even a little lip service. Wait. You know what Sam always says. What are we doing? You just have to let it all out. We're sharing a grief. Next time on Cheers. Thursday at 5.30 on WVIT 30. Now's the time to visit the Connecticut Isuzu dealers. They're featuring special savings on their entire family of stylish, rugged, and reliable Isuzus. It's time to see them all. The Pump Truck. The iMark. The Trooper 2. Check out the Isuzu excitement. Check the yellow pages for your nearest Connecticut Isuzu dealer. Now's the time. Isuzu. I'm Deborah Norville. While you're sleeping, news is being made in Connecticut, the nation, and around the world. Now you can catch up on all the news you need early mornings right here on WVIT 30. Join me weekday mornings at 6.30 for NBC News at Sunrise. Game two of the 1987 National League Championship Series is brought to you by Buick. And again this year, as it has for 85 years, the great American road belongs to Buick. And by Certainty, manufacturer of America's finest quality of home insulation. The Giants, three runs, eight hits. Cardinals, no runs, two hits. A two-run home run by Will Clark and a home run by Jeffrey Leonard. And into the seventh we go. What they're talking about is uh, Sherry says one of the tip-offs on Dravecki has to keep that left arm behind that left ear much like a catcher. And he was watching him and they were talking about it. Now Dravecki trying to get a base hit, fouls it away. 0-1. His dad is here from Youngstown, and what a thrill it must be, oh. huh? Yeah, I know. Having kids of your own, sit in the stands and watch your son. League Championship Series. He saw him in the World Series, of course. Dave grounded out, and remember, he bunted in the fifth inning. And it turned out to be a base hit. That's when the Giants appeared to have a chance to break the game open and they had another opportunity in the sixth but each time John Tudor grittily fought his way out of the jam and that'll be the first question win or lose for Roger Craig did you overmanage? you got him on free and then the top of your lineup coming up little fly ball to right field and coming up as a kindo to make the catch one down and Robbie Thompson will be the batter nice play by Jose To look ahead for the Cardinals in the bottom of the seventh inning, if you're not keeping score, Terry Pendleton, Willie McGee, and Jim Lindeman. Robbie Thompson has taken a hack, or at least an attempt, on every first pitch in this game. He flied to center, hit back to the box, and struck out when you knew the squeeze was on and they pitched out. <laughs> oh, and one. Kevin Mitchell on deck. John Tudor has struck out five. He has walked one, and that really was the intentional pass to Bob Melvin. He came close to walking Uribe, but he fought back off the ropes. One and two. The shadows present kind of an interesting contrast because the top of the light standard is is the shadow covering Tudor and a little bit of sunlight in front of him. Little pop five behind first base and foul ground and Jim Lindemann is there. Two down.
Kevin Mitchell coming up. Third baseman, Kevin Mitchell. Struck out, grounded out, and lined out, and he has made two fine defensive plays, handling a ball hit by Pendleton and almost bounced over his head in the second inning, and then that hot shot that he short hopped off of Kendo's bat in the fifth inning. the corner strike one foul ball off first and that'll go back into the seats out of play we had the largest crowd here last night to ever see an event at Bush Stadium in St. Louis last night they had fifty five thousand three hundred and thirty one the attendance always part of the story this year especially when the Cardinals went over three million today we'll check and see it's coming in fifty five thousand three hundred and thirty one that means no one went home it's the same crowd well they were all on the, the <laughs> highway 40 going home I know that exactly fifty five three thirty one. Oh and two the count to Kevin Mitchell. Ball one. Boy, I love to see pitchers do that. He came inside with the previous pitch and broke Mitchell's bat and came right back with it. One and two. Just did get a piece of it, fouled it back. There are a couple of ways this shake off a sign one is just a stare but the one where you want the hitter to think a little bit is to do what uh, Tudor did very simply shake your head and say no I don't want it and you may come back with the same pitch but he doesn't know that one and two to Kevin Mitchell 0 for three and one for seven he lost a base hit on a good play by Ozzy in the fifth inning last night and popped it up on the right side Lindemann and her and it'll be Tommy her so Tudor a very quiet seventh inning and at the end of six and a half the Giants three and the Cardinals nothing Eddie Eddie understanding your passion for Miller High Life I brought you something a six pack no a bottle Bonafide Frederick Miller original circa 1880 note it is just as clear as today's bottle proof positive Miller has been proud to show their dark rich beer for more than 100 years now that's tradition Eddie that's the American way that's great Jim but I prefer this bottle why is that Eddie because it's full imagine a vehicle with a rare combination of talents a driver-oriented cockpit, electronically fuel injected power, a rear wheel anti-lock brake system, and responsive ride and handling. Now imagine all this, not in a car, but in a pickup. The big new full-size 1988 Sierra pickup from GMC Truck. But beware, once you see how much a GMC Truck offers, you'll find that one just won't be enough. GMC Truck, it's not just a truck anymore. Approaching landing zone. Let's move! We got a connection to make! Give the Army Signal Corps 30 minutes and they can turn a mountaintop into a satellite communication station. Qualify for training like this and you'll learn to work with some of the most exciting high-tech electronics around. Roger, Bravo 2, sit loud and clear. We got him! Bye! All that you can be. did well. We're well connected, Sergeant. We'll find your future in the Army. Of all the furnaces you can buy, only one has pulse technology. The Lennox Pulse Gas Furnace. How good is a pulse? So good, it's backed by a lifetime limited warranty. In fact, it's so reliable, Lennox is making this warranty retroactive to every pulse ever sold. Take it from Dave Lennox. For a lifetime of comfort and savings, get a Pulse Gas Furnace. You'll find it only at your independent Lennox dealer. He's in the yellow pages. a boy, Dave. It was the biggest single swing by a Cardinal all year in the ninth inning against Roger McDowell. Terry Pendleton hit one over the fence to tie it up and the Cardinals went on to win. Had the Mets won that game they would have been a half a game behind St. Louis. 
Instead, they were two and a half behind. Dwight Gooden was shelled the next day, and it was Pendleton leading off the seven today who administered that big swing. Terry robbed of a hit by Mitchell in the second inning, flied to right in the fourth. And the count 0 and 2. The lights have been on since the start of the game, and what had been a, a bright, shiny day is now overcast. One good thing about the overcast, we no longer have shadows. Players really like that sky, too. Plenty of clouds up there, so you can find that ball as it goes from gray to blue. No balls, two strikes. Ball one. Dave Drubecki trying to shut down the Cardinals, and he's done it for six innings. Two and two. The only jam, really, that Drubecki has been in was the fourth inning when he gave up a walk to Smith and a single by her and got Pendleton, McGee, and Lindemann on fly balls. And he's had trouble with the leadoff man three of the six innings. But not this time. So Pendleton strikes out. And that would be a half a dozen strikeouts for Drubecki. We told you that he's high this year, seven. A couple of years ago, he had 11 strikeouts for a career high. Willie McGee struck out and flied to left, 0 for 2. Foul back. Willie's still having problems with that left wrist. You can see he let go of that bat, and he's going to take a little bit of time here. It's the left wrist. It's heavily taped. Jammed it. And when he swung at that one like he did last night, he just couldn't hold on to the bat. You can see the vulnerability of the Cardinals against left-handers with McGee hurting batting right-handed and Jack Clark not playing at all. Boy, that takes a lot of RBIs out of the lineup. On one to Willie. Missed with the change. Trevecki, since he came to the Giants, has won seven games, three of them shutouts. Three of his four complete games. So when he is good, he is very, very good. Not much of a swing. That, that had a bother him. One and two. <laughs> Melvin thought that was the third strike. He saw him grab that ball and uh, tag McGee. That's the ball McGee's been chasing. There's a one way out of the strike zone. I mean, that one, there's nothing he could do with that one. Same pitch coming back. Fouled away. I think, too, with that, since it is the left wrist, once he starts that swing, there is no way of checking the swing. No, he can't stop it because he's going to feel pain when he misses it and trying to stop it. I mean, he would just intensify that pain. So McGee is still there. One ball and two strikes. One out on the seventh. The Giants scored two in the second inning. A home run by Clark with Maldonado aboard, and then Leonard hit one out in the fourth, and that's it. I'm surprised he went that high with that ball. Then one ball, two strikes. I look for him to kind of bounce one up there. One and two. And it's a high fly ball to Eddie Milner. Two down in the seventh inning. Where Tudor has been in some scrapes, Trebecki really has just been sailing along. It's funny the yardstick they use. Remember we talked about the broken bats, and he broke a bat early, Okendo, in the second inning, so it indicated pretty good stuff. And I tell you, when you got two outs in the seventh inning against his ball club and working on a shutout and giving up only two hits, you got to say he's got pretty good stuff going. Jim Lindemann singled and flied to left. Fastball missing, one ball and no strikes. The Drivecki, and we believe he's broken three bats so far. Right. I kept track. Yep. Three is it. Two balls, no strikes. He has struck out six. He has walked three, a leadoff man in the third, fourth, and sixth. And the Giants just sitting back and watching him do it. Three and oh. That was an interesting shot because all the coaches were together. I mean, they're all coaches but they're all close friends and usually they're kind of scattered among the bench but they were just lined up Roger Craig the CEO and the board of directors down there three and one Jose Akendo on deck 
grounded out twice. Big chopper up along third. Mitchell at the bag, but a good arm to get him. So the Cardinals still on the ground, and at the end of seven, the Giants three and the Cardinals nothing. Francisco Giants and President Robert A. Lurie. And of course, this is an important year for Bob Lurie. Among other things, on November the 3rd, San Francisco will have Proposition W, which has to do with the Giants eventually leaving Candlestick Park when the lease runs out in 94 and building a stadium 7th and Townsend downtown. And of course, for Bob Lurie, he played a tremendous part in helping the giant franchise stay in San Francisco because back in 1976 it was just about packed up and gone to Toronto. Jeffrey Leonard, Candy Maldonado and Eddie Milner. Leonard grounded out, homered and singled. So he's four for seven in the series. Line foul. On one. John Tudor figures to bat third when the Cardinals hit in the eighth inning. Though this would apparently be his last inning. And he's wearing the score on his back. Three nothing San Francisco. And in the cool October afternoon you saw him go to his mouth and blow on his hands. Though so that's an answer to that question. The umpires are allowing it. Fouled away. Ricky Horton, the left-hander, throwing back of John Tudor in the Cardinal bullpen. There's Ricky. Oh and two to Jeffrey Leonard. seats built there and of course that fan is taking a little bit of a beating because they think Lindemann could have made that play but the fan reached up but uh, the fan is entitled once it gets over that railing I mean he's entitled to try to catch that ball John Tudor still has something left that pitch was clocked at 86 so in what would appear to be his last inning he can still sneak up that 86 mile an hour fastball Two and two. This pitch coming up here is the one I believe, and that uh, he's going to have to make sure he brings it to the ballpark all the time. It's going to be something off speed because he has set him up with two fastballs. Oh, no, I came inside with that fastball, and Leonard was guessing and broke his bat. So Tudor decides to make it an expensive at bat for Leonard, and that was 86. He's spotting that ball well, though. He, he's coming way inside where even if Leonard hits that ball, he's going to pull it foul. He's not going to hit that ball fair. I mean, it's not, it's from, it's right off the inside corners where it is. So you got to like this guy the way he pitches. Oh, and how? John Tudor. Whitey Herzog has to like him. Eight and one since he suffered the broken leg. Tudor a mainstay for Whitey, especially in the bitter days of September. Two balls and two strikes. Change and it's looped into right field. So Leonard hit a home run to center field. In the sixth inning, he was jammed and fought it into right. Now he goes out after a change up and just hits it over the net for a base hit. That's a case of making a good pitch and a fella getting a hit. He's going to fight it off and he just went with it and he loops it in there. Polite single. A nice polite single. And the pitch was clocked at 75. So from the 11 mile an hour difference he went from a broken bat to a flare to right. And here is Maldonado. Single to left and then struck out twice. That off speed pitch has been driving him a little dippy. Maldonado two for seven and Leonard checking with Zimmer in the third base box. Yeah. 
Down in the Cardinal bullpen, Ricky Horton has company. Right hand to Bob Forsh is up again. Okendo, Pena, and then two to spot in the bottom of the eighth. And that one is hit into center for a base hit. McGee coming up to get it on the second hop. And Leonard holding, and that tag attempt by her allowed the ball to get away, but it's backed up by Tudor. So back-to-back -back singles in the eighth inning with nobody out, and Eddie Milner coming up. Milner has been asked to sacrifice, or at least he has sacrificed, once this year. Very fast. He is grounded into only two double plays. But we'll see whether they want him to go the traditional route. You have another left-hand hitter on deck in Will Clark. I would think he'd be bunning, Vin, and shorten up at first and third. Yep, the Cardinals are looking for it. So Leonard at second, Maldonado at first. Nobody out in the eighth, three-nothing in favor of the Giants, trying to get a couple more. And he got the bunt down. Tudor's going to let Pendleton pick it up. And wow, what a close play. And a fine play by Tommy Herr. He had to take that thing just about off Eddie Milner's head going by. And leaning into the runner like that, he's wide open. Excellent play by Tommy Herr. Good bunt by Milner. And Tudor knows it's going to be a tough play for him because if he picks it up, he's running away from the play. And Pendleton with extra on it but her he really picks that thing off high and then like a bullfighter Terry had to throw that ball hard Ole. so second and third and one out and they're going to walk Will Clark intentionally so for Tudor he's really had some tough innings he had to fight his way out of a jam in the sixth inning especially he had troubles in the fifth inning, you remember, when the busted squeeze helped him out. And now he's going to be up to his hips in trouble in the eighth. So Bob Melvin will be the batter. If you looked on the giant bench, in case they get to switching, you have Brenly, Spire, and Williams, the right-hand batters. Spillman and Aldretti the left hand hitters and Melvin will come up and bat against Tudor those are the availables and of course Milner is already in the game so the base is loaded in the eighth with one out Melvin is flied to right and to left and then remember they tried to kind of make him go after a bad ball and finally walked him intentionally in the sixth inning. Infield back in double play depth. The low pendulum comes up now about even with the bag. Melvin has hit into seven double plays this year. One and one. With John Tudor trailing three nothing trying to hold on and keep the Giants close and then hope his mates can get back in the game. Leonard Maldonado and Clark out on the line. High foul off first base and that will carry out a play in the count one and two. Same crowd as last night, but a much quieter crowd yeah. today because of Dave Dravecki. Foul tipped and held by Tony Pena. So Melvin strikes out. A half a dozen strikeouts for John Tudor. He pulled the string on him and he's way out in front. Just flicks it. Pena with that first baseman mid behind the plate able to hold on to it. 
So each left-hander has chalked up six strikeouts. And Jose Uribe coming up again in a big spot. Remember, he came up with a base loaded in the sixth. The count went to three and zero, oh, then to three and one. They let him swing, and he hit into a force play. Now in the eighth inning, he gets a second chance. Uribe is one for three, a pop fly that should have been caught in the fifth inning and was allowed to drop. Ground ball to the hole. Ozzie has it, goes through his legs after going to his knee to make sure it wouldn't go through. And it is five to nothing in favor of the Giants. That's a rare play. They ought to put that thing in a time capsule. It really is a rare play. He was going to make sure that ball didn't get by him, and I wonder if his concentration was such. Now watch him get down on his knees, which he rarely does, and it just goes right through the wicket. He got down on his knees but didn't get the glove down, and that is really man bites dog. Whoa. So an error by Ozzie Smith allowing two runs to come over and it is five to nothing San Francisco and Drevecki feeling very chipper about things now as Uribe at first and Will Clark at third. One ball and no strikes and here comes the runner to the plate and the throw to Pena Clark is out. So they tried to time it on the throw to first, and Will Clark is cut down 1-3-2. But the damage is done. Two runs over in the eighth. And at the end of seven and a half, the Giants five, the Cardinals nothing, as Clark comes up empty. Here's another one of those plays you practice in spring training. On the first move right there, the guy on third, he has to break home. Will Clark does. But I tell you, that's an old Ping Bodhi line, Vin. They had him by a mile. There was larceny in his head. And meanwhile, Ozzie Smith sitting with Vince Coleman in the dugout, trying to do a little cheerleading now. Willie McGee on the other side of him. And Jose Akindo takes ball one. And in case the question popped up into your mind, there has never been a steal of home in the LCS. Okendo grounded out, then hit the ball hard in the fifth inning, and Kevin Mitchell made a fine play to get him. Jose 0 for 2 playing right field. And the Cardinals are hoping that this time would be the charm. Three times today, Drivecki has walked the leadoff man in an inning. And he's behind three and Otto Akindo here in the eighth. That's a strike. Three and one. And he's done it again. Four times in eight innings, he has walked the leadoff man. And the batter will be Tony Pena. Tony Pena has walked and struck out. The giant bullpen, Mike Lacoste is joined by Don Robinson. Lacoste might just be getting in some work. Robinson is certainly one of the mainstays of the pen. Ball one. Robinson is a man that Craig said he's my closer. So if he's going to close it, it'll be Big Robinson. Tom Pagnosi, a right hand batter, is on deck. So the Cardinals trying to get off the floor, but they're down five nothing in the eighth inning. Strike one and one. Okendo at first. Cardinals have had two hits. A single by Lindemann in the second inning and a single by her in the fourth. One ball, one strike. That's a little pop fly behind the bag at second. Robbie Thompson. And that could be another broken bat. That would be number four. Boy, you're really pitching a shutout when the guys are counting broken bats. Well, that's the thing. Uh, I remember at San Diego, uh, 
when he was pitching over there, they said, well, if he breaks bats, he's got good stuff. And I'm checking my notes. Mm -hmm. I asked about it, and he said, yeah, he'll do that, and he has done it. Yeah, you could really hear that thing crack. Tom Pagnosi coming up to bat for John Tudor. So Tudor gave up five runs and ten hits. The home run ball hurt him, and then, of course, the error by Ozzie Smith wrecked him. And here's Pagnosi. Bob Forge throwing alone in the Cardinal bullpen. Foul ball, 0 and 1. Bob Melvin got a little of that as Forge continues to throw in the pen. Just did get underneath that hanging piece of leather and got him on the side of the neck. Nobody came out to check. They looked at the ball, though. The ball's all right. 0 and 1 to Pagnosi. Ground ball to third. Mitchell goes down to Robbie Thompson. He goes back to Clark. Double play, and the inning is over. And you know what? That sounded like it might have cracked. It could have. It could very well have. And at the end of eight, Giants five, Cardinals nothing. The difference a day makes. Last night, Bob Brenly struck out three times. He was angry, down, and depressed. Ah, but today. Uh, today's a typical catcher, a little teddy bear. <laughs> Look at him. <laughs> Difference in moods from dugout to dugout, and we go to the ninth inning. Giants five, Cardinals nothing. And Dave Dravecki will start it off against Bob Forge. Complete game shutouts in the National League Championship Series. One of them turned in by Bob Forge. Seven to nothing, a three hitter in 82. Now he's trying to get Dravecki, who is pitching a two hitter, in the ninth inning. So that'll do it for Dravecki, one away. You can tell the experienced pitcher. I mean, he just goes out, he's got a job to do, got two strikes on Dravecki, you're not going to work on him. He's just snap off a hard curveball and see you. The pitchers who had complete game shutouts in the LCS in the National League, John Matlack, Don Sutton, Tommy John, Ray Burris, Bob Forsh, and Mike Scott. Dravecki still has to wade through the top of the Cardinal lineup in the ninth inning. Vince Coleman, Ozzie Smith, and Tommy Hurd. He's not finished yet. Robbie Thompson, 0 for 4 today and 0 for 7 in the series. Force has made five pitches, five strikes. No nonsense kind of a pitch. You got that right. You just put the fingers down and catch the ball. That's what they're telling you. And another one, so he immediately rings up Dravecki and Thompson. Two batters, two strikeouts for Bob Force. Big overhand curveball. That's the one in the old neighborhood. Remember, you call it a drop. Here it is. And all Robbie Thompson could do is just watch it float by. Bob Forsch has been with the Cardinals since 1974. One ball and no strikes the count. To Kevin Mitchell with two out in the ninth inning, five to nothing, San Francisco. Mitchell 0 for 4 and 1 for 8 in the series. 2 and 0. Bob Forsh leading all pitchers over 13 years with a single team. Fly ball to right field, Akindo. Puts it away. So Forsh puts the Giants away in the top of the ninth inning. And we go to the bottom of the ninth with the Giants leading the Cardinals five to nothing. St. Louis and for the Cardinals as we go to the bottom of the ninth inning. Five to nothing San Francisco and the Goodyear blimp serene up there in the sky. And Vince Coleman anything but serene fouls it away. Flied to right struck out and walked. 0 for two. 
to show you what kind of a masterpiece Trevecki has turned in the fewest hits allowed in an LCS Ross Grimsley and John Matlack two hitter Vida Blue over in the American League a two hitter and Trevecki has a two hitter today earlier we were talking about no steal of home involving Will Clark we were talking about the National League of course 15 years ago Reggie Jackson stole home in the American League. Oh and to the count. Ball one. If you're wondering about pitches with Dravecki, with that last pitch, he's made 112. Mm. He's had really only one jam, and that was in the fourth inning. And he was leading three nothing at the time. He walked Ozzie Smith and Tommy Hurst single, so he had first and second and nobody out, and he got Pendleton. McGee and Lindemann on fly balls. He's had as much trouble with the leadoff man as anybody in the lineup. He has walked the leadoff man four times. Pena in the third, Smith in the fourth, Coleman in the sixth, and Okindo in the eighth. And he's two and two to Coleman now in the ninth. Remember, this Cardinal Ball Club, such a great offensive machine, only shut out twice at home this year by Rick Sutcliffe. And Brian Fisher. Two balls, two strikes. Fly ball to straightaway center, and there's Eddie Milner. One away in the ninth inning, Ozzie Smith coming up. The executive producer of NBC Sports is Michael Weissman, the coordinating producer and today's director, Harry Coyle, and the producer of today's telecast, John J. Filippelli. Don't forget the American League tonight, Minnesota and Detroit. One ball and no strikes. The Cardinals will go to Candlestick Park for their meeting Friday night with San Francisco. Hop foul off to the left and out of play. The replays today picked off for us by Steve Dans and Dick Klein. Our thanks to them as well. Friday night it'll either be Danny Cox or Joe McGrain against Atlee Hamaker. And then whoever doesn't pitch Friday night will go against Mike Kruko Saturday. And the off day stories will say how will the Cardinals do against the Giants on grass real grass. Well they won two of the six there during the regular year. Little fly ball and Robbie Thompson going out puts it away. And so the Cardinals thoroughly blank today no two ways about it. Just as the Giants were thoroughly shut down by Greg Matthews last night, Trevecki has pitched a gem, a two hit shutout with two out in the ninth inning. Want to make a pool as who the first Giant player will be to say we were happy to come here and get a split? <laughs> first one you see. <laughs> Ball hit into left center, and Leonard is there. And that's it. The split is exactly what it is. But the headline, the performance by Dave Drabecki, the young man from Youngstown, a two-hit shutout for the Cardinals, thoroughly muffled. They never had any kind of an offense except in the fourth inning, could not get a man to third. So it was all Drabecki today, aided and abetted by a couple of early home runs. Will Clark with a man aboard, Jeffrey Leonard with nobody on, and then, of course, the error by Ozzie Smith. And Bob Melvin getting congratulations from the teammates. He's the private catcher, and Ian Dravecki sharing in it. And I tell you, they go back home now in the old home ballpark, friendly confines, as they say. And it will be interesting with the uh, getting off the artificial surface. So this is pretty much what you expected. Two good ball clubs, a lot of inside baseball, so really no surprises. No, none whatsoever. The Giants using the home run and expected strong pitching to get the split and the Cardinals getting great pitching last night and then completely shut down today which is news. So five runs ten hits for the Giants no runs two hits one error for the Cardinals the winner is Dave Drabecki the loser is John Tudor and we'll be back after this. The light player of the game is Dave Drabecki and Miller Light is happy to present a check for a thousand dollars in the name of Dave Drabecki to the National Multiple Sclerosis Society and after pitching his brilliant two hit shutout today Dave Drabecki will be our guest right after this message but Drabecki today did not allow a hit after the fourth inning.
So it was one man taking complete charge as the Giants beat the Cardinals. We'll be back with him. Seven National League Championship Series has been brought to you by Miller Genuine Draft, cold filtered draft beer. It's as real as it gets. By the heartbeat of America, today's Chevy truck. By the Prudential, going above and beyond to meet your needs in insurance and other financial services. And by the makers at New Prestone Advanced Formula, the antifreeze that guarantees your radiator. We'll be back with Dave Drebecki after these messages from your local station. You stiffen up in between innings or what? No, I don't think that was the key. I think the key uh, to that was that um, basically I just lost concentration. I, I think I was trying too hard, and consequently I was aiming the ball. And uh, you know, in order for me to be effective in the strike zone, I've just got to let it go and concentrate on Bob Melvin's target. You mentioned Bob Melvin. What is the special relationship you have with him, Dave? What does he do to make you feel so comfortable? Well, I think, Joe, you know, as, as a catcher, the bottom line is to be in sync with the pitcher. And every time I've gone out there with Bob Melvin um, and Bob Brindley, both guys on this ball club, been able to work in sync with them. I don't have to think very much. Um, we're basically calling the same pitches as each pitch takes place. And I think that's the big key. When I want a slider on the outside part of the plate, um, and I'm thinking advanced of that, then Bob Melvin's calling the same thing. So just being able to work in sync, and I think that's been a big plus because it helps my momentum creates a good rhythm and then you know being able to stay in that rhythm helps me to be more effective. Dave we had a shot of you talking to Norm Sherry and one of the things in scouting everything about this ball club uh, Norm told me that you really have to concentrate on keeping that that arm of yours behind your left ear and, and throwing from the top was that pretty much what you were talking about. Exactly. Um, one thing that uh, that Norm has really helped me with is uh, as a catcher you know uh, they're always told to throw from behind the ear. And basically for me that's the same type of theory that I have to use. Although I don't throw from back there it helps me to get my arm up and my hand on top of the ball. Whenever I get flat it's because the hand drops and my arm starts to spread out. So consequently Norm was basically trying to just remind me that uh, you know stay on top and just uh, let it go follow through throw through the catcher's glove and not to the catcher's glove. Dave there were two times in the game today where it appeared the Cardinals were starting to build some momentum and each time you were able to shut them down. Let's go back to the third inning. Tony Pena opens up with a walk. At the time, you're leading two to nothing. And it looks like a bun situation with Tudor. There was a lot going on with you and with Will Clark. At one time, Clark started to come to the plate, stopped, and then everybody came to the mound and had a meeting. Finally, on a pitch out, Pena was nailed, and that ruined any possible inning for the Cardinals. Can you tell us a little bit about what was going on in the third inning? Well, the key in that situation, Vince, is in that in that particular play uh, with will charging uh, obviously the object for me is to keep the runner on first base from moving towards second I have to wait until he stops if he doesn't stop I've got to I've got to step off otherwise I'm going to give him an opportunity to get a better jump so in that situation all I'm trying to do is focus on him and at the same time make a pitch at the plate and uh, it just happened to work out where uh, Tony Pena got a little lazy there and then took off and uh, we were able to get him on the pitch out. Now, in the fourth inning, the one rally, so to speak, that you had to contend with, you opened up by walking Ozzie Smith, then Tommy Hurst singled him, and now you had Pendleton, McGee, and Lindemann. The crowd was roaring. You had a three to nothing lead, but it was in trouble, actually two to nothing at the stage. You shut him down on fly balls. Tell us about pitching to Pendleton, McGee, and Lindemann under those circumstances we want to discuss today. The purpose of today's news briefing is to announce another in a series of indictments involving labor racketeering and corruption here in New Jersey. Two weeks ago, some of you may remember, we announced two indictments of this type. Hello again, everybody, and thanks for joining us here on ESPN Sports Center. I'm Larry Burnett, along with John Saunders. Lots of baseball to talk about tonight. We had a game this afternoon.